So this is the iPhone 11 Pro, Apple's flagship phone of 2019 and a pretty big step forward from the previous iPhone XS. However, just over a year later, and of course, with the release of the iPhone 12, should you consider picking one of these up in 2021? Let's find out. First of all, as usual, we're gonna be taking a look at the specs. The iPhone 11 Pro is rocking an Apple A13 Bionic processor, which was, all things considered, a pretty huge step forward. And we're gonna be discussing what this means and how this affects performance later on. It also features four gigabytes of RAM, either 64, 256, or 512 gigabytes of internal storage. So if you have a lot of games or local files, it's nice to know that you're covered here. Me personally, I actually only have the 64 gigabyte version, as usual. I always find that's totally fine for me, but if you do need more storage, then it's also nice to know that you're covered. In terms of weight, the iPhone 11 Pro weighs in at 188 grams, which is pretty heavy considering how small it is. However, in my time using it, I've never found it to be too overbearingly heavy. And while it is slightly heavier than my iPhone 12, I haven't had any issues and I doubt any of you will either. As for the general specs, that's pretty much it. Now, of course, as usual, both the screen and battery life have their own sections later on with their respective specs in. But if you're new around here, I generally prefer to focus more on real world performance and user experience rather than just focusing on tech specs and while I definitely think there's a place for that a lot of what at least in my opinion makes an iPhone stand out is the software optimization so we're going to be taking a look at that in a bit but first of all what about the build quality? Well, in that regard, this is probably my favorite iPhone I've ever owned. I absolutely love the frosted glass back combined with the stainless steel bezel, and try as I might, chances are I won't be able to convey just how good this phone looks in this video. Seriously, I'd seen pictures of the iPhone 11 Pro before, but until I got my hands on my own version, I had no idea just how good this thing looked. In terms of actual build quality, it is a glass backed phone, so obviously there is a significant cracking risk. But in the time I've been using my iPhone 11 Pro, I haven't had a case on, and the few times I have accidentally dropped it, it's been totally fine. Granted, I will be putting a case on this thing, and I strongly recommend you do too. I mean, you drop this thing and smash both the front and back glass, you're gonna be facing a pretty hefty repair bill. So, unless you're either really careful or plan on buying a lot, I'd honestly say, probably best to put a case on this thing. In terms of water resistance, the iPhone 11 Pro features an IP68 water resistance rating, and Apple actually claimed that this thing can survive in up to four meters of water for 30 minutes. In my time testing this phone, I have purposefully got it wet. I've always found Apple's water resistance to be pretty solid, and I'm pleased to say here is definitely no exception. Again, I always say this, but this isn't something to rely on. This should be considered more of a fail safe, say you accidentally fall in a pool, I don't know, then you should be covered here. But as always, try not to get your phone wet. Overall, it's more of the same, really. A gorgeous design that feels amazing, but despite both the front and back glass panels being Gorilla Glass, according to the spec sheet, I would still recommend putting a case on it if you want to avoid that hefty repair bill. Up next, we're going to be talking about the screen, which, at least to me, is one of the most important aspects of the modern smartphone experience. The iPhone 11 Pro is rocking a 5.8-inch Super XDR OLED HDR10 Dolby Certified display with a resolution of 1125 by 2430 a typical brightness of 800 nits and a peak brightness of 1200 nits. Wow, that was a lot of numbers. Basically, what this means is it's pretty good. Because of that OLED display, blacks look nice and deep, there's a good level of contrast, it's ready for HDR content, and all in all, it's pretty much perfect. The iPhone 11 Pro also features Apple's True Tone technology, meaning that basically the screen will analyze the ambient light in the room and balance your screen colors to match that environment. This has long been one of my favorite features of iPhones, so I'm pretty glad that it was included here. The iPhone 11 Pro features haptic touch as its secondary interaction method, which, as I've said before, I don't quite like as much as 3D touch. In fact, this was the first flagship iPhone not to feature 3D touch and fully replace it. While it is a shame to see it go, haptic touch is good enough now that the difference between them is very slim. If you don't know what the difference is, basically, haptic touch operates on time press, whereas 3D touch operates on pressure level. Overall, the screen on the iPhone 11 Pro is definitely a standout point for me. I think it's a really nice size with all the features that a flagship phone release today would have. And if you're looking to pick up this phone in 2021, then you're in for a treat when it comes to the screen. Following on, we have the button layout. And to be totally honest, not a lot has really changed here since the first notched iPhone. In fact, nothing has really. However, 
that's not particularly a bad thing. The iPhone 11 features two separate volume up and down buttons, a nice big isolated lock button, and of course, the ever useful mute switch. All the buttons feel nice and tactile, however, in my experience, stainless steel bezel iPhones actually don't have as much tactility in the buttons compared to their aluminium counterparts, but still, all the buttons feel well mapped out and just make sense. I have noticed that with the iPhone 11 Pro, I do occasionally take a few accidental screenshots, but this is a rare occurrence, and once you get used to the button layout, these accidental screenshots will be few and far between. I don't know, not much else I can really say here. As I said, not a lot has changed, but to be honest, I'm okay with that. After this, we have the Face ID, which has been greatly improved from the previous 10s. Before, you'd have to point the phone directly at your face, and while it was pretty quick to unlock once this happened, the iPhone 11 Pro is leaps ahead. Nowadays, to unlock the iPhone 11 Pro, all you have to really do is look at your phone, so if you have your phone on a table or on your leg, you will easily be able to unlock your phone, which I think is necessary for a good Face ID system. Granted, Touch ID does still have some advantages, for example, you don't even need to look at your phone, but still, I do think Face ID is the future, so it's definitely important that it works well. It's also, compared to its previous flagship counterpart, much faster. Pretty much as soon as you look at your phone, as long as your face isn't obstructed, the iPhone 11 Pro will unlock practically immediately, which is kind of awesome. Overall, the Face ID is definitely a strong point on the iPhone 11 Pro. It's crazy to think just how much better it's got since the original iPhone 10. And yeah, in my time using the iPhone 11 Pro, I've had no issues with it. Okay, so next up, we're going to be talking about probably one of the biggest differences between this and the previous iPhones. That the, the three cameras. <laughs> up until this point, iPhones had only had up to two cameras, usually a wide and a telephoto. However, the iPhone 11 Pro added a third ultra wide camera, bringing this new unique field of view. And I've got to say, it has been incredible to have all three. In terms of resolution, all three cameras feature a 12 megapixel count, with the wide having an aperture of f1.8, the telephoto having an aperture of f2, and the ultra wide having an aperture of f2.4. But how does it actually perform? Well, Let's take a look. If you are a mobile photo enthusiast like I am, chances are you're gonna love this phone. I found that all three angles get a really nice amount of sharpness and saturation, in part thanks to the new image processing from the A13 Bionic, and all in all, the images that this phone can produce look spectacular. I have found that with the ultra wide lens, you do occasionally get a little bit of distortion around the edges. However, with a lens this wide, that is kinda to be expected. But this is minimal, and honestly, just from looking at these sample images that we've taken, we really get an idea of just how how capable the iPhone 11 Pro is for taking some casual photos. In terms of portrait mode, you can use it on both the wide and the telephoto, which is very nice. And while it's still not perfect with it occasionally missing the background blur, most of the time it is pretty dead on nowadays. And you can get that full frame look without having to lug around a full frame camera, which is not fun. Next up, we have the night mode, which was actually a feature introduced to this line of iPhone. Essentially, what it does is it takes a long exposure photo, so you get a nice bright low light shot without having to use the flash or getting crazy levels of noise. Again, this works on both the wide and the telephoto lens, however, not the ultra wide lens or the selfie camera like on the iPhone 12, but I've still found the night mode images of the iPhone 11 Pro to be clean, most of the time shake free, and overall, a really nice addition to this phone. The iPhone 11 Pro also has a 12 megapixel front facing true depth camera with an aperture of f2.2 and the selfies that you can get out of this look pretty nice. Not really gonna go into much more detail than that, but as I said, good for some quick selfies, dynamic range is good, saturation's nice, skin tones look decent, and overall, yeah. It's good. Now, moving on to video. The iPhone 11 Pro can shoot 4K video at up to 60 FPS in extended dynamic range, and this looks awesome. I have actually just done a full video testing out the camera on the iPhone 11 Pro, so if you want to take a look at that, feel free to check it out. But in general, I found that the video you can get out of this phone looks really nice. It also shoots in slow motion, 1080p in up to 240 FPS. And while I do think 120 FPS looks significantly better in terms of quality, it is always nice to have 240 FPS as an option. The selfie camera also shoots 4K at up to 60 FPS. However, I'm pretty sure once you go over 30 FPS, you do lose that extended dynamic range. But I actually think this is the first front facing iPhone camera I would considering you Using for video. I mean, say I need to get some quick shots, I can just whip out my phone, flip it round, 
and start recording. This is super meta. You can also get slofies on the selfie camera, which look cool, but are kind of pointless. And overall, the camera on the iPhone 11 Pro is definitely a standout point, which is kind of to be expected. I mean, this thing has three cameras. If you are looking to take some casual photos and videos, it is very unlikely the iPhone 11 Pro is gonna let you down. Anyway, moving on from the camera completely now, next up, we're gonna be talking about the most important aspect of the modern smartphone, OS and app performance. In terms of compatibility, the iPhone 11 Pro was launched back in September 2019, meaning that it shipped with iOS 13. What this essentially means is because we're on iOS 14, yeah, this thing isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Generally, iPhones get five years of support. However, the iPhone 6S actually got iOS 14, which is nice. So maybe the iPhone 11 Pro will get six years. Who knows? Either way, not like that matters for a very long time because chances are the iPhone 11 Pro isn't not going to be supported anytime soon. All right, so this is all well and good, but how does the phone actually perform? Well, scrolling through the OS is nice and snappy, opening up stock apps is incredibly fast, and performing secondary interactions is flawless. This is what I was talking about earlier when I said a lot of the iPhone experience is actually down to the software, and if you pick one of these up, you're definitely in for a treat on the software side of things. In terms of third-party app performance, it's more of the same. Streaming 4K video on this phone is awesome and pairing that performance with the screen makes for a pretty outstanding mobile media experience. In terms of games I've tested on this device, while I personally do prefer casual games myself, so that's what I've played most of, I have also tested some more intensive games and as far as performance goes, the iPhone 11 Pro hasn't skipped a beat. So overall, wrapping this section up, as I said, the performance this phone provides kind of makes it feel like it was released this year, which is awesome. After this, we're going back to the hardware, specifically the speakers. Now, historically, while iPhone speakers have gradually got better over time, the iPhone 11 series not only implemented the stereo technology, which we saw on the iPhone 7, but a brand new technology dubbed spatial audio playback. I found that when I was testing both the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro, it just helped the audio seem a little bit louder and a little bit more full sounding. Now, this isn't to say the iPhone an 11 Pro is suitable for anything like crazy critical listening, but for casual listening, I think it does pretty well. Finally, we're going to be talking about the battery life. The iPhone 11 Pro features a battery with a capacity of 3,046 milliamp hours, and I've got to say, combined with the A13 Bionic and despite the crazy screen, the battery life kind of rocks. In fact, it outperforms my iPhone 12, lasting me all day without fail. In fact, at the time I wrote this script, it was 7.30 at night, and I still had a low a battery life left. It also works well with USB-C fast charging, which is nice. And overall, I found the battery life to be pretty damn reliable. Okay, so wrapping this video up, despite being released back in 2019, the iPhone 11 Pro is a fantastic phone for 2021. It's last year's flagship that I personally like better than my iPhone 12, which as some of you regulars may know, that is currently my daily driver. And overall, if you want a phone with a gray screen, a fantastic camera, awesome battery life, and in my opinion, the best best design ever, then it is very difficult to go wrong with the iPhone 11 Pro. All right, guys, so that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know, by the way, what phone do you currently have? Do you have an iPhone 11 Pro? Do you plan to buy one? Always like reading your comments. As for now, though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.